Hi, I'm Tim Russo. I'm a Democratic activist from Cleveland, Ohio. We're here in lovely Brighton, the Labor Party, and that's having its conference in Brighton. And we're here to talk to people about democracy. Is, is this really democracy, this conference? I mean, you would sure, this is a, an ingredient of democracy. And democracy is, of course, a kaleidoscope of a variety of parts, a lovely mosaic, uh, with some difficult bits and some less than elegant bits and some worrisome bits. But most of the time, it demonstrably is by far the best means ever developed for human beings to conduct their relationships and to organize their society. There is no doubt about it that the democratic vote uh, at the, uh, after our agreement was the most historic thing that has happened in Ireland given the centuries of our quarrel because it was the first time in history that the people actually spoke as to how they wished to live together by coming out in strength to vote for that agreement. Mr. Richard. I'm, I'm sorry, I cannot. I'm late. I'm right. Thank you. <laughs> and so there goes you, your right? elected official. <laughs> democracy is power. There's no democracy here, mate. You're standing here with that sign. Is that democracy? Yeah. Hell yeah. I have been publishing pamphlets for oh, about 40 years now. Okay. okay. Well, uh, there is, uh, was involved in a uh, locker room. You know Lockerbie? He was. Oh, yes. <laughs> what did he do? <laughs> what did he do? Um, democracy is, um, is on the fire the last couple of years because mm. of the rise of the extreme right. Mm. When you put down the sword and put up a gun, and by the use of a ballot paper, you can transform your life. Democracy is not a gift, it's an achievement, and it's something we all have to work on every day. We were from the foundation. I worked in Kosovo. Macedonia, Albania, uh, Slovenia, and now uh, Serbia. Tim did a lot of the key campaign of it, so the two of us promptly lost one seat. Yeah, we did. I first met Tim when he came over to help out for the um, for the general election campaign that we had here in 1997. Immediately, our campaign was over in 1997. He went off to Armenia and um, was promoting democracy for the NDI in Armenia. Yeah, I actually went to law school and I realized it's about as miserable a way to make a living as digging ditches. These are the anti-globalization protesters. They turn up at every conference. They're getting bigger and bigger all the time. But the weather's probably tamping down the numbers a little bit today. Security, quite more security here than protesters at the moment. So the lovely background of protesting and screaming and red flag waving. Uh, we will discuss what the Conference of Arrangements Committee reported. It lists the various resolutions submitted for consideration by the conference about various issues. And each CLP, constituency Labor Party, can submit whatever they want about whatever issue they want. Probably the most sophisticated policy development that, that you're going to see in any political party. But you see and I here discussing this, uh, this rather interesting long-winded document about policy and possible policy. Right. And then over here... <laughs> These people don't give a damn. <laughs> Try and get the General Assembly so that we can get some sort of perspective. It's and I think uh, that uh, the people of this country really don't want to extreme military action. I hope that the Prime Minister has been using words. I'm going to talk to him today. I mean, uh, maybe. I'm going to talk to the, the journalist to me. But if the richest country in the world. You know, maybe a little offbeat thing with him. Yes, do you really think Tony Benn knows what he's talking about? Because Tony Benn is uh, the flag bearer of the hard left in the Labour Party. Um, he probably is more left than any living person in the United States right now. <laughs> it costs $60 billion. $60 million. Also, the other thing is, this interview could go on for hours. <laughs> so we're going to move on. <laughs> Controversial and divisive vote, they say, at a time of world crisis. We asked the Union's General Secretary, John Edmonds, why he hadn't come in behind you on this issue. Because the main point of our argument... Go after it. Well, we asked if we could talk to one of the reporters about the media's role in democracy. They don't want to talk to us. 
Uh, I'm not sure why. Um, we're not asking about Sky News, we're asking about you as a journalist. No, um, I mean, I honestly couldn't. Um, Sorry, I'll be back. If someone from, uh, from Sky News were to ask you a question and you were to say, well, I don't really want to talk to you, what would be the response on their part? I think, I think they'd uh, certainly uh, try and vilify me. They'd say, well, why do you want to speak to us? Save the people from hypnotism of the media. Hypnotism. Yeah, the media is hypnotizing, well, brainwashing the people. We're doing a documentary on democracy, which the BBC plays a big role in, I think. We're, democracy? Oh, we don't have any of that in the BBC. We're, <laughs> we're a tyranny. <laughs> if you care to put that on camera. Well, for some reason, they don't want to talk about democracy. And these are, these are I can't imagine why. As a journalist, hopefully, my aim is to pull out different views and just kind of present them saying there's not just one yeah. view. Establishment can be challenged. The first time I ever leafleted, I was a 15 year old kid and we were trying to pass a school levy in the United States to raise taxes to pay for better schools. And it was a day a lot like this, except it was raining that day. And when you're 15, you're not prepared for the weather. You just go out, they hand you some leaflets, and you go out in your tennis shoes and your ball cap and no windbreaker, no, uh, no rain gear, and you get all wet. And you go and you knock on people's doors and you ask them to raise their taxes, which is a message I don't think is very welcome. And when you come back from that, you sort of ask yourself, well, what did I do that for? And during that election, that levy passed by a very slim margin. It gives you that empowerment to say, you know what, I made a difference, even though it was freezing cold and I was wet and my nose was dripping. and. Uh, and I got sick the next day, that one person can make a difference. And that's why those people are, are here doing what they're doing. And that's why I've been doing what I've been doing.